Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2004 Chevy Suburban with a 5.3 liter. This vehicle came from another shop and I was told that they have been working on this truck for about a couple of days now and they still can't figure out what's causing this vehicle to misfire. So this vehicle is misfiring and it has one trouble code which is P0300 and they tried everything they could but the code is still not going away and the vehicle is still running rough so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna connect the scan tool to the truck and then we're gonna scan it for some trouble codes let's confirm that that P0300 is present as we're talking and then we're gonna see which way we're gonna go with this so we can fix this but I also wanna let you know that the other shop has replaced a couple uh, parts on this truck. So I'm going to tell you the things that they replaced and I'll bring you guys here under the hood So you can see all the parts that have been replaced. I mean they look new when you see you'll be able to tell so With the code they had they did do a tune-up Apparently when you have a P0300 you do a tune-up. So they have replaced the spark plug wires They replaced the spark plugs and they replaced the ignition coils all eight of them <laughs> This is interesting. All eight ignition coils have been replaced and the issue is still there. And they went further to replace the injectors. So they replaced all eight injectors. Eight injectors have been replaced and the issue is still there. And then the uh, O2 sensors. They replaced four O2 sensors. The issue didn't disappear. And then they replaced the Mars Airflow sensor because the Mars Airflow sensor looks new. They also replaced the mass airflow sensor. The issue still remained there, so that's when they quit. They said, you know what? We're putting too, too many parts in this. This is starting to be expensive. So let's see what we're gonna do. So they called me, they said, well, can you take a look at this? Because we replaced this, we replaced that. And I'm like, why did you replace all these things? Anyways, that's not what we're here for. We're here to find out what is going on with this engine so we can fix it. Ah, it's very unfortunate. So I'm gonna bring you guys here under the hood and then we will look at the parts they have replaced and then we'll scan it and see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. All right, so I'm gonna show you the parts that they replaced before we connect the scan tool to the truck so we can see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. So right here, as you can see, the spark plugs, wires are new and ignition coils, okay. So all these ignition coils have been replaced, okay? Ignition coils are new and then the injectors also. I don't know if you can see in there, but all eight injectors have been replaced. So spark plug, spark plug wires, uh, ignition coils, injectors, and it's the same thing on the other side. So over here, it's the same thing spark plugs and ignition coils have been replaced and the injectors are new I don't know if you can see but right there we got new injectors on it and then the mass airflow sensor right there new mass airflow sensor Delphi part so right there mass airflow sensor has been replaced and then the O2 sensors also. So I'm gonna take you under the truck so we can look at the O2 sensors. So we are here under the truck and this is the passenger side. As you can see, this bank two sensor one has been replaced. And also bank two sensor two, that one also has been replaced. So this truck got four new O2 sensors and that one also is new. So this is bank one sensor two. And then the first one on bank one is this one right here. And that O2 sensor is also new. So this truck also got four new O2 sensor and the issue still remained, okay? So the issue wasn't fixed. So now let's lower the truck and see what kind of test we can do. All right guys, so you saw all these parts that have been replaced, but the truck is still not fixed, okay? so. Now let's connect the scan tool to the truck to see what kind of trouble codes we have. 
So I got the scan tool connected to the vehicle and here is a trouble code that we have in memory. It's kind of going on and off, I don't know why, but we got the P0300 engine misfire detected. Okay, so right there, this is the code we have and the engine is really running rough. It's really, really running rough. Okay, so let's back out of here and look at some live data. We're gonna look at some misfire counters and see if there's any specific cylinder that's misfiring. So I'm gonna start the truck. So looking at the uh, history count, cylinder number six looks like is the one that's been misfiring a lot. So right now these other cylinders are not counting. Well, cylinder five is now counting and then it looks like six is starting to count. I mean the engine is really running rough right now. I don't know if the camera is gonna be able to pick that up, but, but if the camera doesn't, just take my word for it. So as you can see right here, cylinder number six is now counting. So cylinder six is misfiring and cylinder number five is also misfiring, but it's mostly cylinder number six. I mean, this engine runs like crap right now. And when you look at the history, uh, cylinder number six has got the most counts, okay? So we have confirmed the complaint. This truck is definitely misfiring. So now let's look at some live data. Uh, let's look at engine data. I wanna look at uh, O2 sensor data pids and let's see how our O2 sensors are doing because if we have O2 sensors that are stuck, that could also, uh, let's actually, let's customize this list. Deselect all, let's grab O2 sensor, just the first ones actually, but I'll grab all of them. So let's go to list view. I'm gonna graph both uh, first sensors. So what we need to see is we wanna see a swing, you know, going up and down from reach to lean, reach to lean. And it looks like our O2 sensors are doing just fine. And these catalytic converters are not hot yet, so I just started the truck. Now, this P0300 can be caused by a couple of things. This engine could be starving from fuel, but my friend told me they checked fuel pressure. Now I'm gonna increase the engine RPM and once I increase the engine RPM for about half a minute or one minute, and when I let off the throttle, these, all these O2 sensors should read uh, rich. They should all go high if we have good fuel delivery. So let's check that now. I'm increasing the engine RPM. And that's also gonna help uh, heat up these catalytic converters. So our O2 sensors are switching very well. I mean, we saw the sensors, the sensors are new, so. I don't think we have defective sensors, but who knows? I mean, we always gotta double check. So I'm gonna let off now, and we should see a rich reading right here. And right here, as you can see, both, all our sensors are showing a rich mixture. The first sensors and the second sensors, I mean the first ones before the catalytic converter and after the catalytic converter. So we most likely don't have a fuel delivery issue. And as you can see, the check engine light is on on the dash. So, fuel delivery issue is most likely not the problem. And I was told that they did check fuel pressure. Fuel pressure checked out okay, it's within spec. So I just did this to double check, okay? It looks like our O2 sensors are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Everything looks fine. Let me look at my fuel trims. Let's put some fuel trim numbers here. Let's look at our long-term and short-term fuel trim numbers. I mean, our fuel trim numbers don't look bad. 
Then we put it in gear and see what happens. So I have it in gear now. Huh. Interesting. Okay. So, I'm gonna turn off the truck. Let's go under the hood and then I'll tell you what my next step is gonna be. Because I was told they gave me uh, a list of the things they already did. So right now, they, I, I only have a couple of things I need to check before I make the, the final decision on this engine, okay? So let's go under the hood and then I'll tell you what they did. I'll tell you the results they got and then I'll tell you what I'm thinking that we should check because I think there's something that they missed. So let's go under the hood. Let me turn off the truck first. So let's go under the hood and then I will tell you what needs to be done. All right guys, so back here under the hood and I'm gonna tell you the two tests I wanna do uh, before we're pretty much done because my friend told me the things he did at his shop and I think he only missed a couple of things. He was kind of on the right track but he missed a couple of things. And I mean, I don't think this truck needed all this stuff that they replaced. They shouldn't have replaced all these things but again, the injectors had been replaced. They checked power and ground at the injectors and I did double check all these things off camera guys because I didn't want this video to be super long, okay? So I made sure that the injectors are getting power. They're all getting power. I also checked for injector control. They're all getting control. I scoped the injectors. I looked at the voltage waveform and the current waveform. The ramps look good on all the injectors. Again, although the injectors had been replaced, but you can get defective injectors out of the box. So I, I double checked the injectors. The injectors checked out okay. I checked the uh, the coils, especially the one on cylinder number six, which is misfiring. I checked it, I checked for power, ground. There's a spark there, the spark is strong. I checked it with the scope. The coil is actually working fine. I checked the spark plug, the gap is good. So all, these, all, these are the things that I did off camera and I double checked because they already told me that they checked these things and they checked out okay but I double checked just to be just to be sure so you know we have injectors that are firing we have uh, coils that are firing and the other thing I also did off camera is I did a compression test okay I did that with the lab scope first I did uh, clamp my amp clamp around the battery uh, ground wire, the battery uh, ground cable, and the, the, the waveform I saw on the lab scope screen, current, all the peaks and valleys were pretty uh, decent, okay? The peaks and valleys were really consistent, and even the way this engine sounds, like I don't think we have a mechanical issue like on the, on the bottom end of the engine, okay? And... Um, so I used a gauge, I tried with the lab scope, everything looked good. Then I used a compression uh, gauge in that cylinder number six and running compression looked pretty decent. And then cranking compression was just fine. I compared it to the other cylinder next to it. It was pretty good. So test that would pretty much tell us what is wrong with this engine. It's either a cylinder leak down test or a uh, timing. We can also check the timing because I've seen this vehicle because this is a high mileage truck. It's got a lot of miles. And when these trucks have a uh, high mileage, it could be a stretched timing chain. If your timing chain is stretched and the marks are a little bit off, you can have this P0300 and it's gonna drive you crazy. So, I mean, I'm gonna do a cylinder leak down test on that cylinder cylinder number six which was which is misfiring constantly and then if we don't find anything there we're gonna check timing uh i'm gonna hook up a lab scope we're gonna have to go to the uh computer and look at our crank and cam sensor signal wires and then we're gonna back probe them to see our uh crank and cam crank sensor and cam sensor uh waveforms to see if this vehicle is still timed Okay, we're going to have to find a non-good uh, waveform for that but to compare with. But before we do that, that's going to be the last step I'm going to do. Okay, if the leak down test checks out okay, 
we will check timing. With that being said, uh, I didn't want to film all that stuff because, again, the video is going to be super, super long, okay? Now, what we need to do is these, uh, these engines, these Chevy engines, sometimes they, they are also known for having uh, broken uh, either exhaust valve spring or intake valve springs. So now we have to do a cylinder leak down test. But before we do that, I am kind of curious. Since cylinder number six is the one that was misfiring constantly, I am going to remove this valve cover. I'm going to take the valve cover off. I just want to inspect the springs. We can have a spring that's not sitting properly. Okay. And you don't have to do this this way. There's another way of doing this, but this is kind of easy to do. Don't ask me questions about, oh, why you just didn't do it without removing the valve covers? Yes, I can do this without removing the valve covers, okay? I can, but it's easy to do just a couple bolts and these valve covers are so easy to remove. So I'm gonna remove them just to do a quick visual inspection under the valve covers. And then we're gonna do a cylinder leak down test. If everything checks out okay once I remove the valve cover, then we're gonna do a cylinder leak down test. So. You do a leak down test by putting the cylinder you're testing in the compression stroke. So your piston has to be at top dead center and both valves have to be completely closed, okay? And then the rocket arms have to be uh, free. You have to be able to move the rocket arms, both of them. The one for the exhaust valve and the one for the intake valve. You have to move both of them. That will tell you that the valves are completely seated and your and you have to make sure that your piston is at top dead center. Okay, so to get this valve cover removed, we have to undo these bolts. There's one bolt over here. We have to remove this bolt. And then there's another one over here. These coils come up. So we're gonna remove this, this uh, rack of coils. We're gonna take this off and then I'm gonna disconnect the uh, ignition coils and then the uh, valve cover it's got tiny eight millimeter bolts, so this one, and then it has more under the ignition coils. I mean, it's pretty easy, guys. So once I take this off, and then I'll bring you guys back up. All right, guys, so I got the valve cover removed, so we are almost ready to do our cylinder leak down test. So we're gonna use this cylinder leak down tester. This tester has got two gauges. I know this gauge is off. It's supposed to be down here on the zero. But even if it's off, we can still do our test, okay? Our percentage of the leak is probably not going to be accurate, but we will be able to tell if we have a leak in that cylinder. So the gauge on the left tells me how much air I'm putting inside the cylinder, and then the gauge on the right tells me the percentage of the leak. So it tells you how big your leak is, okay? So you need this uh, cylinder leak down tester to do your leak down test. This is a cheap one from Abafred, but I know they have better ones out there. This one is pretty good. It gets the job done. So that's the most important thing. Here is our valve cover and those are the ignition cores right there that I just removed. I did put a screwdriver here to hold the throttle plate at wide open so that we can hear any leak that's going to come from the intake side. If we have an intake valve that's not sitting properly, we're going to hear air leak from this opening here. If we have an exhaust side that's not sealing properly, we will hear a leak from the exhaust pipe. So we're going to go back to the, to the back of the truck to hear a hissing noise coming from the tailpipe. If we hear a hissing noise there, that will tell us that the exhaust valve is not sealing properly. All right. So before we do that, we have to make sure that our cylinder, the cylinder we're testing is in the compression stroke. So the cylinder we're going to be testing is cylinder number six. Remember, cylinder six was misfiring constantly. If I'm not mistaken, cylinder number six is the cylinder right here. So these two rocker arms here that you see, we have to make sure that these rocker arms are completely open, okay? So we have to make sure that the valves are completely closed. When the valves are closed, these two rocker arms here will be free, so we'll be able to move them. I can kind of move them right now, but we have to make sure that they are not pushing the valve down. You have to make sure that both valves are completely closed. 
So your exhaust valve and your intake valve have to be closed completely. And once your valves are closed, these rocker arms should be free. You should be able to move these rocker arms with your fingers, okay? So once your exhaust valve and your intake valve are completely closed, you also have to make sure that your piston is at top dead center. So that's a compression stroke. So we're gonna have to induce air inside the cylinder to see where the leak is. If our cylinder is sealed up, if we don't have any leak in that cylinder, the air is not gonna leak out of anywhere. It should hold air for a pretty decent amount of time. But if it leaks from anywhere internally, we will know. It could leak past the piston rings. If it leaks past the piston rings, we will probably hear it coming from the dipstick tube. Okay, so now I already removed the uh, spark plug. I'm gonna show you, let me get my second light here. So I already got the spark plug wire removed. So the opening for the spark plug on this cylinder is somewhere around here. I already got the spark plug wire and the spark plug removed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert this dipstick inside the spark plug tube or the spark plug hole so that we can make sure that the piston is at top dead center. So I will Sit you guys over here so you can see what I'm doing. All right guys, so I inserted this dipstick inside the cylinder. Right now I believe the dipstick is touching the piston inside the cylinder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin the engine and as I'm spinning the engine, the dipstick is gonna start going down as the piston is going towards bottom dead center. And then it's gonna come back up towards the top dead center. As we're spinning the engine, we also have to watch these two valves, okay? We have to make sure both of these valves are closed and these uh, rocker arms here are completely free and our piston has to be at top dead center. I'm using this dipstick tube inside the cylinder to check the position of the piston. So now I'm gonna spin it, just watch the dipstick. The dipstick is coming out, I don't know if you can, I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but the dipstick is coming up. This valve over here is going uh, down now. It's starting to come up. So both of these valves are completely closed and the piston is at top dead center. I can feel the piston right there. So these two valves are completely closed and our piston is at top dead center. So I'm gonna take this dipstick out. So now I'm gonna screw this tube inside the spark plug hole so that we can send air inside the cylinder. So right there, I installed this tube inside the spark plug hole. So now I'm gonna connect this to the tool right there. So I'm gonna try to put this in a shot. I'm gonna bring my air hose here so that we can send air inside the cylinder. All right, so I did connect my air hose to the tool here so now, we're gonna start sending air inside the cylinder. As you can see, we're sending about 30 PSI of air inside the cylinder right now. So, what do you guys think? Are you curious? Now let's see where our leak is. All right guys, so I got the cylinder leak down tester connected to cylinder number six. And remember, cylinder number six is the cylinder that was misfiring constantly when the engine was running. 
So we did put cylinder number six on the compression stroke. So the piston is at top dead center and both valves, the exhaust valve and the intake valve are completely closed. If I move these rocker arms here with my fingers, I can move them. I don't know if you can hear the play. I can move both valves in that cylinder, cylinder number six. And our piston is at top dead center. With the cylinder being in a compression stroke, it means if we induce air inside the cylinder, the cylinder is supposed to be sealed. So we shouldn't have an air leak anywhere, okay? So with the cylinder being on the compression stroke, if there's a leak, you could either have a leak with the piston rings. If you have worn out piston rings, air is gonna leak past the piston and the cylinder wall, and you will have a leak either on your oil filler cap or on your dipstick tube. You can have an exhaust valve that's not sitting properly. And if that's the case, you will hear air leaking towards the tailpipe. Your tailpipe, you'll hear the air coming out of the tailpipe. If you have an intake valve which is leaking, you will hear air leaking out of your throttle body. And here, what I have found is that our intake valve is not sitting properly because I can hear air leaking out of the throttle plate, okay? So I'm gonna bring you towards the throttle body here. Can you guys hear that? We are definitely leaking air there. I'm gonna use this screwdriver to open up the throttle plate. Do you hear that? Okay, let me change the pitch of this sound with my hand. Do you hear? Do you hear as I can change the pitch of the sound with my hand? So right there guys, this is definitive. We have an intake valve that's not sitting properly. That's why this engine is misfiring constantly. So as you can see, the spark plug wires look new. So spark plug wires have been replaced on this engine. Spark plugs, injectors, ignition coils, uh, O2 sensors, I mean, you name it. All of this stuff were replaced just to fix this issue. But guess what? All those parts did not fix the issue. The issue is the intake valve not sitting properly. And the proper way of fixing this engine is either we have to pull out the cylinder heads. We have to take the heads out, send them to the machine shop so that the uh, head can get worked on. Or I don't know if the customer is just going to go ahead and replace the whole engine. I've seen people just get rid of engines because of issues like this. The truck has, I think, over 200,000 miles. So I'll call the customer, let the customer know about what I found. I'm going to leave it up to him. I would recommend getting the heads off, both of them, and sending them to the machine shop to get rebuilt. And then I don't know if he's gonna give us the job, but we'll see. I will let the customer know about what I found. So, intake valve not sitting properly. Actually, let's go to the back of the truck to look at the exhaust tailpipe to see if we have a leak over there. So it's quiet back here. There's no leak. So the exhaust valve is not leaking. What's leaking is our intake valve. Okay, so right there, I'm gonna put everything back together and then we will wrap up this video. So tomorrow I will let my friend know because this vehicle came from another shop. I'm gonna let my friend know about both options, whether pulling out the heads and doing the job or maybe finding a good engine with low mileage to see which way the customer is gonna go. So we're gonna give the customer both options. My friend told me that he's busy, he's probably gonna have me do this job. So we'll see, I'll talk to the customer and then we'll go from there. So, if you have a mysterious misfire like this, because this has been going on for months, you know, it took a while to pinpoint the issue and narrow it down to what we just did. So, you know, f develop a diagnostic procedure, stick to it, go step by step, check one thing after another okay don't just throw parts at engines don't just replace parts because this engine didn't need all these coils and 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 spark plug wires and injectors and all this stuff okay the issue was this valve 
that's not sitting properly. All right. So again, test things, don't guess. All right. So I'm gonna put everything back together, and then we're gonna wrap up this video. Listen to this one more time. Oh man. All right, guys. So I'm gonna leave it right there. This was what was causing this engine to misfire all the time. So the intake valve inside cylinder number six is not sealing properly. So that's why this vehicle was misfiring all the time. It's sad that they had to replace all these parts. I mean, yeah, that's kind of sucks. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it right here. I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why. If this is your first time here, subscribe to my YouTube channel. K diagnostics and ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video if you have any comments questions criticism leave them in the comment box thanks for watching guys see you next time